Okay, in this video I want to use background images in order to assist the design of my web page. Now, folks that have uh, more uh, Photoshop skills and graphic art skills are going to have a much easier time at this, so I'm just going to try to use some features with CSS and some free images available in order to get something graphic appearing without being a graphic expert myself. Now to start off, I wanted to have an image, and I'll jump back over to Dreamweaver here in a second. So I went over to Stock Exchange, which is a great website for web designers with um, some royalty-free images. So at Stock Exchange, I went into the um, most downloaded images, and I saw this picture here of a lime, so I clicked on this one. It shows the download option. And then using Earth and View, which is a free little image editor, I did a solarized image effect and I resized it down to uh, 600 by 400. Now Stock Exchange provides images and each one has licensing information. For instance, the image I chose is free to use, but I'm not allowed to resell the image um, as a graphic artist, or I'm not allowed to use it in templates, uh, web design templates that I might resell unless I get permission from the artist. But you are allowed to you view the licensing information you are allowed to in this image and many others. You can use it on your websites, multimedia presentations and things like that. You can use it on business cards and stuff. So uh, so just go through and read the licensing agreements for individual images and you'll find some really nice quality work that you can use and promote. So I've got this image and I just tweaked, tweaked it a bit and then I went over to Dreamweaver. Now in Dreamweaver I started off I've got four different divs. Each div is uniquely identified panel 1, panel 2, panel 3, panel 4, and so on. And within each of those divs, there's a paragraph with just one letter. Letter L, letter I, letter M, and letter E. So if you looked at my code view, this is what I've got. I've got four divs with a paragraph in each one with one simple letter. And I'm going to go ahead and format these with some style sheets. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to format all four of these at once. I'm going to give them width and height and float them. Okay, so I've created a new rule and I'm using a group selector. Notice I've got the same, I've got panel 1, comma panel 2, comma panel 3, comma panel 4, all at once. All of them are going to have the exact same background image, which I've called line medium. And they're also all going to have the same dimensions. They're all going to be 150 wide by 400 tall. 150, of course, is one fourth of their 600 width of the total image. I'm also going to float each of these to the left, and I'm going to give them a margin of five pixels on all four sides. Let me click OK. Here we go. So these are my four panels side by side. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to position the background image for panels two, three, and four. I'll have to do this individually, so I'll have new rules over here. I want to position these panels so that the image is kind of reconstructed, which means I'll be shifting the background image for my second panel to the left 150 pixels so I can see a new portion. So that's the next thing I'm going to do. Okay, and I'll do the fourth one here. I'm going to create a new rule. This one will be for panel four. I'm going to go to the background category, negative 450 pixels for position X, zero for position Y, click OK, and now my background image is somewhat reconstructed here in each of the panels. They all have the same background image, but in each one they are repositioned in a slightly different way. So we can see here, panel 2, background position is negative 150 pixels by zero, panel 3, negative 300 pixels by zero, panel 4, negative 450 by zero, by zero, and that puts the image seemingly back together. Now I just want to format the letters a bit to help them stand out. I'm going to create a new rule. This one is going to be a class. Okay, so I'm going to use a class selector and I'm going to call this class um, Lime Text. Okay, notice it's created a new selector here in my CSS panel. Dot Lime Text. Dot means a class. Class is a CSS rule that you want to apply to multiple things. Have them look the same. And I'm going to go ahead and make a few quick changes here. I'm going to go ahead and give it a nice uh, sans serif font. I'm going to make the font really big. How about 72? That's probably going to be too big, but I'll do 72 points. I'm going to do text align center. Actually, that's over here under the block category text align center. 
under the box I'm going to set the width of this to 150 pixels which means ultimately I'm going to apply this to the paragraph my paragraph will be 150 pixels which is the same width as the panel that it's in it's going to have zero margin and zero padding and that should be enough for now let me go ahead and click OK and now to apply that I can just go to where my letter L is click on that click on the P in the tag selector go to class go to the drop down choose lime text I get a big L and let me do this also for the letter I the letter M select the P in the tag selector go to the class menu in the properties panel choose this class available and for the letter E there we go so I've got those big letters there now and of course I could jump ahead and I could also change colors or I could even make them even bigger and that's easy enough to do instead of 72 points what about 140 points there we go so now the letters are getting a little bit bigger than the panels I don't know if that looks as good I'll go back I'll just scale it down to 110 okay so now I'm using some background images that are repositioned with large lettering on top now that we're using a background image as our as our example here I want to just show you how easy it is to kind of change our minds and change our graphic so what I've got here this is the original image that I worked with this is the one that I got from uh, stock exchange it's a uh, three th over 3,000 pixels wide by 2,000 pixels tall so it's a big image so let me go ahead and do an image resize using Earth view by the way and I'll just go ahead and size it down to 600 by 400 and let me go ahead and you know let's say I just wanted to use this one let me go ahead and do a file save as and I'll change this so I'm going to change its file name over to lime green okay and once that's been changed this is going to be really easy I just go to the rule that refers to all of my panels with the background image I go to edit this rule and I can simply change the background image to lime green click OK and instantly all of my panels will change appropriately since they're all using that exact same background image so you'll see this on a lot of contemporary websites a lot of the photos that you see on a web page aren't inserted into the page in a way you may have done traditionally using an image tag instead they are divs and they're using a background image so as an example, let me jump over to the web real quick, and this is, uh, of course, Bing.com, Microsoft's new competition for Google. Uh, sorry, Google. And, uh, and let me just do a right click anywhere up here, and I'm going to use my X-Ray add-on for Firefox, which is a really great add-on for web developers. I'm just going to go ahead and just display some markup here. And we can see in this one div, and we know it's a div, they're using lots of div tags in this nice well written page and they've got this image and if you go to being regularly you see that this image has changed well they've got a div and they've given a unique ID called BG div and they can simply change the background image of that particular div section so it makes it really easy to do an image change on their page or to set up a script which changes it automatically uh, maybe every day of the week or every hour for all I know